supermarkets could be doing to bring those prices down quicker. Absolutely, we'll put those questions to him. Hannah, thank you. 6.39, the time now. The High Court case brought by Prince Harry against the Mirror Group newspapers continues this morning. So Prince Harry has finished giving evidence for a second day and told the court that he brought the case to stop hate towards his wife, Meghan. We're joined now by Jim Waterson, The Guardian's media editor, and India McTaggart, royal correspondent for The Telegraph. Good morning to you both. Um, I suppose it'd be really interesting just to see how you think Prince Harry performed on the second day. There was some contrast there. Jim? Uh, yes, Harry, on the first day, I think people had wondered whether he'd be able to keep his cool under pressure because it is not fun when you're cross-examined in the High Court. On the first day, he was pretty calm. But on the second, he even started pushing him back a bit, telling the uh, Mirrors barrister that, you know, to cut across him and pushing back on some of the questions. So he seemed pretty confident, really. And that is interesting. He got across his points. He got perhaps the media coverage outside of court he wanted. And while he struggled a bit on some of the detail about where uh, exactly his supposed uh, claims were based on evidence, he certainly got across the messages that he wanted to the judge and to those outside the room. And India, you were following this uh, through the live feed because there were limited places in the court because it was packed for those two days. Um, what was your impression? And, and, and just explain kind of what this is about. This is a civil case. Yes, absolutely. So this is a civil case and he is suing MGN, the Mirror Group newspaper publishers, for damages um, that he sort of claims there was an industrial scale uh, level of phone hacking that started at Mirror Group. Um, he brought 33 articles, originally 148 articles in his claim um, that got whittled down to 33 um, that are supposed to uh, show that he that uh, information about him was obtained unlawfully. Um, and I agree with Jim. I think yesterday he was a lot more confident um, than he was on Tuesday. He was sort of more able to challenge Andrew Green, MGN's barrister. Um, but I do think he still scrambled to substantiate his assertions that the stories had been unlawfully obtained uh, by MGN, despite claiming he had hard evidence. Um, it was easier for, for Andrew to sort of poke holes into his argument, I think, as, as Jim pointed out also. Yes, Jim, morning to you. Do you just want to pick up on, on that notion? Because obviously there was huge interest in him being there, but fundamentally this is a court case where evidence mm. is put forward and then the judge in this case will determine what he sees and whether he, there is sufficient evidence uh, to, to come up with a verdict. So what evidence uh, has Prince Harry presented that his phone was hacked to get information? Harry uh, has sort of two broad claims. One is that if you uh, bought a newspaper produced by Mirror Group newspapers in the 2000s, that's the Daily Mirror, the Sunday Mirror and the People, there's a good chance you did read stories that came from phone hacking. They were at it. They were definitely targeting celebrities all over the shop. Harry says, you wrote lots about me. You hack lots of celebrities' phones. I don't believe you didn't do it to me. And here's some articles where I think you could have done it to me. For instance, he talks about when he was in a, a brief uh, friendship with Caroline Flack, the late TV presenter, and he turned up at her house having told only a couple of friends, leaving voicemails to arrange it. And he was amazed to find a photographer was waiting for him under a car outside the flat and got pictures that appeared in the People newspaper a few days later or other times that he just could not understand how they got information that he discussed with his brother. The Mirror said, well, maybe someone around you sold that. Maybe someone who's close to you passed that information on. Maybe there's a more innocent, perhaps unpalatable, but innocent and legal explanation of this, Harry. And he just kept saying, no, I've got hard evidence. And he challenged the Mirror, why aren't you putting up the reporters who wrote these articles to answer questions? I've come here. So there's a sort of gap. It, it, he's, he's saying and inviting the judge to speculate and conclude that because phone hacking was rife and other illegal acts were carried out by these newspapers, that it must have happened to him. And the Mirror says, I'm sorry, you just don't have the, the killer blow to prove this. And we are fighting this case on that basis. Yes. And India, this, of course, is a civil trial. So the the, the level of proof required is, is different, isn't it, which could be significant? Absolutely, yeah. The burden of proof falls on the, the claimants to, to really uh, substantiate their claims of phone hacking um, and unlawful information gathering um, by mirror group journalists. Um, and I think to, to you know, go back off on, on Jim's point, 
he claimed yesterday there was an industrial scale destruction of evidence by the Mirror Group journalists. So he claimed that on his phone throughout his whole life, ever since he had a phone, um, that there had been unusual activity on that phone that alluded to um, uh, phone hacking and, and voicemail interception. And that was why some, he in his mind thinks that that is why some of those incidents were um, found out by the press as as uh, Jim brought up Caroline Flack. He had only told his friend Mark Dyer and Caroline Flack about that meeting. Um, and also he brought up the example of a private investigator. Um, he alleged that a private investigator attached a tracking device to his ex-girlfriend Chelsea Davies' car. Um, so he brought up examples like that, but didn't actually have the the punch. He couldn't pack the punch with, with the evidence. Um, so I think he was he was scrambling about that in that sense. India, thank you very much. India McTaggart from The Telegraph. And uh, Jim Watson, thank you very much. That uh, Jim is the Guardian's media editor. Thank you both. It is quarter to seven. As usual, Carol is taking a look at the weather. Carol, good morning to you. You know, sometimes um, it's quite uh, non-eventful, the weather. You can say, you know, bright skies, high pressure for all. But this moment, this morning, we're going to talk about it later. We've got the first health um, heat alert, haven't we?